If I would have to pinpoint exactly one trait or skill that I would consider to be the most important when it comes to success in programming, computer science or machine learning, I would say it's self-directed learning. In other words, being an autodidact. In this video today, I want to talk a little bit about why I think that becoming an autodidact is one of the most important things as a computer scientist. And I also want to share some strategies and mindsets that can help you to become one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. But now let us get right into it. So what does it mean to be an autodidact? According to Google and Oxford languages, it is defined as a self-taught, or we could also say self-educated person. So someone who learns stuff on their own without the need for guidance, without the need for a teacher. That, of course, doesn't mean that they don't use resources from other people. They can still read blog posts, read books, watch courses, watch videos, and so on but they don't rely on anyone else to take them by the hand and guide them through the process of learning. They're able to seek out information and study it on their own. And this is a crucial skill. When starting new projects, launching a company or getting a new job, it's all about being able to learn what's needed quickly, not already knowing everything in advance. Don't get me wrong, long-term experience is irreplaceable when it comes to deep and holistic understanding, but it's not enough, especially in fields that are constantly changing and rapidly changing like computer science and machine learning, there's always new stuff coming out, new architectures, new models, new papers, new languages, new frameworks. But even without that, there's already so much out there that you cannot just learn everything in advance. So everything is about being able to adapt quickly. And I myself have done this many times in the past already. I've agreed to develop or deploy applications with frameworks or tools that I was not that familiar with at the time. Now, of course, I didn't lie. I didn't present myself as an expert in the technology, but I knew that I will be able to deliver the results that I promised because I'm able to learn new stuff quickly and independently. This is also why people that I work with are not concerned when I tell them that I don't have any experience with a technology that is needed for a project. They know that I'll be able to learn it quickly and properly, and they also know that I'm not going to request any help or resources from them. Now, I actually don't think that I need to spend much more time convincing you guys that this is an essential and very useful skill. But how does one become an autodidact? I want to structure the answer to this question into three parts. One, everything is complicated until it isn't. Everything seems huge and confusing when you don't understand it. But everything also becomes trivial once you do understand it. When learning something new, we oftentimes don't even know what kind of questions to ask. We lack any context. We don't even understand what it is that we're learning. Over time, however, we recognize that there are like two or three key concepts. And once we understand those, everything becomes much more clearer and we get a much better overview. We read about the same concepts multiple times and in no time, they're obvious to us. I remember what it felt like to try and understand backpropagation for the first time. I didn't even understand what I'm trying to understand. Is this a training step? Is this the same as gradient descent? What am I even trying to calculate here? I was completely confused. Nowadays, I just look at the formula, I look at backpropagation and think, okay, we're just applying the chain rule of calculus to see how the individual parameters, so the weights and biases, affect the loss so that we know in the next step where to go with each of these parameters. And of course, I also knew that textually, so I could also quote that before that, but now it just seems obvious. I have the intuition, I understand what it's about. Back then, I didn't even understand anything about it. And this will happen to you every single time you try to understand something that's new and complicated. My advice here would be try to keep it simple and ask fundamental questions. What are weights and biases? What is the loss? Why do we need to backpropagate the loss? What does it mean to backpropagate the loss? What is the chain rule of calculus? How does this all fit together? What am I even doing here? Answer these fundamental questions before you move on to more abstract stuff. However, also beware of perfectionism. Sometimes it's better to just get the gist of a concept and move on because things are going to get clearer as you move on. This is especially the case with more practical stuff. I think when it comes to math, it makes sense to go a little bit slower and try to understand all the details before you move on to more advanced concepts. But especially when learning new languages, new technologies or new frameworks, it makes sense to just get the gist of it and start building and over time you will understand what the best practices are. You will learn about all the nuances by working with it over time. Two, learn to tolerate confusion and discomfort. Being an autodidact is not really a matter of skill. It's a matter of tolerating confusion and discomfort, trusting the process. It might sound cheesy, but you need to be willing to live at the edge of discomfort. Read news and papers you don't understand fully. 
try to implement projects that seem too challenging for you. Push through that initial feeling of overwhelm and confusion. Over time, you will notice that you encounter the same concepts over and over again, and you will realize that most things are just another one of those. To learn new and complicated stuff on your own, what you need to do is you need to fight back against the voice in your head that tells you, I don't understand anything. This is too much for me. I'm probably not intelligent enough. Now, of course, it doesn't make sense to read advanced machine learning papers if you don't know what derivatives are and you struggle with basic full loops. But it is always good to try to understand material that feels a little bit too much for you. Identify exactly which sections, words and concepts confuse you and then use Google, Wikipedia, Stack Overflow and other sources to try and resolve these confusions. Now, what's most likely going to happen is you're going to encounter more concepts, more words and more sections that you don't understand. Understand. You want to repeat the process until you have the feeling that you understand the individual things that the paper or whatever you're reading is based on. Remember the first point, everything will seem overwhelming before it seems trivial. And then everyone will think you're a genius because you understand something that seems overwhelming to them. But of course, you know that all you did was persist and push through the initial confusion and discomfort. And of course, failing is part of the process and the best way to learn. Practicing stuff that you already do understand is oftentimes very comfortable and easy. Learning new stuff and failing to understand it is oftentimes quite difficult and painful. It doesn't feel very nice, but the results are worth it. Three, bite off more than you can chew. Now, this final point is especially important for those of you who want to become entrepreneurs or freelancers. You want to put yourself into a situation where you just have to learn certain skills. Agree to implement a project using a certain tech stack you're maybe not that familiar with. Agree to deploy your application with Docker, even though you might not really know what Docker is. Agree to set up a Postgres database, even though you've only ever worked with MySQL. For this, of course, you should have some general skills already. This doesn't make sense if you're just starting out and learning to program. You don't want to agree to developing a full stack web application if you're still struggling to understand if statements. You don't want to be an imposter. You don't want to fake skills. Be open and transparent. Don't lie. But also, you don't just want to agree to projects and requests if you know exactly how to do every single part of the process. Accept offers that seem a little bit too challenging. When you need to find a way to make it work, you most likely will find a way to make it work. There is a quote I read some time ago, I'm paraphrasing now because I don't know what the exact quote was or who said it. But essentially, it said an entrepreneur is someone who jumps down a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. And this is exactly the approach that you need as an entrepreneur. But even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, I think you need this approach to some degree in a competitive and highly rapidly changing field like computer science, machine learning and programming. Again, don't confuse this with being a fraud. You don't want to be running around telling everyone you're a Kubernetes expert if you don't even know what a config file is and you don't even know what containers are. Just agree to requests and offers even though you maybe don't know exactly how you're going to manage them. Learning is part of the process and the best way to learn is to implement stuff, encounter problems, research and find solutions. So that's enough of me yapping about this. I just wanted to share this because these are some strategies and mindsets that I've been employing for quite some time already and I'm quite happy with them and with the results I've gotten from them. So maybe this is not for everyone, but maybe some of you guys are inspired by this and maybe it can help some of you guys. If you like this video and want to see more yapping content from me, let me know by hitting a like button and subscribing to this channel. Otherwise, let me know in the comment section down below what kind of content you prefer, what you want to see, if not yapping content. And besides that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.